This is a dual drive off-road scooter, 75 volts, 60 amp hour, made all out of aluminum. 4,000 watt hub motors. Disc brakes. Digital readouts of amps, watts, volts, and speed. Rear suspension swing arm. Front forks. Intake manifold to cool the batteries, BMS, and exit through the controllers to keep them nice and cool. This design was to keep the wheelbase short as possible and gain the most ground clearance. I bought a pallet of these batteries. This came out of a Chevy Bolt. I have to Dremel off the bus bars individually to get the cells out. There's two cells in this chamber. Here I'm making bus bar clamps, I would call them, or just clamps. They just hold the cell tabs together. This is carbon grease to prevent any corrosion from aluminum and copper, two different metals. In other terms, it's called galvanic corrosion. Here we go, starting with the frame. One by one aluminum tube. Grinding everything smooth. Again, just tack welding. Very important to get everything centered and straight. We're going ahead and actually doing some welding now. So I had to preheat the aluminum and now we're, we're actually paying attention to the welds. Before it was obviously just tack welds. So it takes a lot of preparation and time here to clean the metal. Aluminum is not easy. You need to brush it, clean it, and heat it and then Push the welds, each spot. And when you're done, you should get this nice metallic silver looking weld that's bonded to both metals. I take the original triple trees from the front fork system, modify and cut it to fit the very wide tires. What I made here is just, I call a skeleton beam. It just aligns the triple trees alignment to the center of the forks. That way I know if I need to readjust something, I could cut it real simple and readjust it. And then once it's centered, then I go ahead and cut the metal to weld to make the final product. Ozzy Smith would say, this is my glove. That was for my uncle Vic. Uh, you guys should look him up. It's uh, Vic Smith uh, or 
or Victor Smith. He is an amazing artist and uh, he makes amazing trains. I feel like a lot of um, my motivation comes from him. Here we are with the controllers, getting them aligned. This is controller A and controller B coming up. Just so you know, I did not use these controllers in the final product. Um, they're just way too much power and um, ran into some technical difficulties with these controllers. Um, not that I would say they're their fault, but the manufacturer said it was. Um, anyway, I used the final results, half the size of a controller. So here I go mounting the front forks to the frame. Here is one and a half by one and a half aluminum square tube. It's just, I call them rabbit ears. They make sure that the strength of left and right make sure they don't move. This is just showing you before we clean it up, the tech welds. This is the intake manifold and getting prepared for the charging port. Priming, painting, and finishing the frame. Believe it or not, this part actually takes longer than you would think, um, but it's done. Making the custom handlebars. Wow, was this a treat. Handlebars I had were way too low and I couldn't find anything on the internet to buy so I had to make some out of steel So I don't weld steel that much. It's my actually first time welding steel in a long time. So it took a little bit of a um, Experiment and I use that little book cover there. You can see to hold it up But I wanted to make some handlebars that were like those big beach bike handlebars Those ones that are like crazy wide and big because I felt that fit the scenario after you grind it and get it ready for painting, you can't tell I made it. It looks like a real professional handlebar. I'm very impressed with that. <laughs> I love it. I'm now wiring the system, which took a long time. It's all electric stuff, so there's a lot of wires. Um, running the wires correctly down the right chambers um, are not easy. You know, getting uh, you know everything to connect a long time. Here's the battery. This is, like I was showing you earlier, my um, 75 volt, 60 amp hour battery. I'm trying to get it into the chamber I made of his housing. Almost, I mean, it fits like a glove when you get the sucker in. And look at this. It's not bouncing around. It's, it's in there tight, nice and neat. Just how it was designed with the BMS everything wired in now it's time to get everything clamped in and bolted on getting the display mounts
And here's the display. This thing will tell you everything you need to know because it is controlled by the VMS. So it's everything you need to, you need to know about anything. This is the protective housing that protects the intake manifold and the controllers. So when you go over something, you bottom out, it will hit this part. Now I didn't need it as big as it is because I ended, ended up using controllers that are half the size. So I could have cut the thing in half. But at this point, I did not know that. I am making grip tape like off of a skateboard to fit the area I want for my feet. Let's go for a ride. Here we go. The terrain is very up and down, makes it very hard to conquer any speed at certain points. Plus, this is my first time driving this vehicle. Once you get going, the thing is a blast. Feels like no problem. And it handles soft sand amazingly. And is out of this world to just ride.